Okay, translations, essential question. This is chapter 4.1. How can you translate a figure in a coordinate plane? What you will learn is how to perform translations, perform compositions of translations, and solve real life problems involving these compositions. Okay, so performing translations, um, the new definition is vector. A vector is a quantity that has both direction and magnitude or size and is represented in the coordinate plane by an arrow drawn from one point to another. So the core concept here says vectors. The diagram shows a vector. So this green arrow that looks like a ray, are, we are now going to call them vectors in the coordinate plane. It has an initial point P or starting point that's at P, and the terminal point or ending point is Q. So this doesn't go on forever and ever like a ray does. It does have an end point. The arrow just tells us the direction. So we know that P is our initial point and Q is our terminal rather than the other way around. The vector is named vector PQ, which is read as vector PQ. The horizontal component of PQ is 5 so in other words, how did I get from P to Q? I had to go to the right five and up three. So the horizontal component is the distance horizontally or five, and the vertical component is your vertical distance, which is three. The component form of a vector combines the horizontal and vertical components. So the component form of vector PQ is five comma three, but we don't use parentheses. We use these uh, bracket looking things. They look like a less than and greater than symbol, but not quite. And that is defining direction to the right five up three is what vector PQ does from its initial point. Okay, here is example one. It says to identify the vector components. So in the diagram, it says name the vector and write its component form. So the first thing I'm going to do is, okay, its initial point is J. Its terminal point is K. So I'm going to just draw and draw like an arrow with this one hook up here like that. So this tells me the direction and that is vector JK. And then it says write its component form. So to write its component form, you're going to have something comma something with these symbols that look like less than and greater than, but they're just like uh, just, just a different type of parentheses. And so in order to do this, we want to know how far we went to the right to get to K. And I'll do this with a straight line. So let's do it in red and a little bit thicker. Okay, so if we start at J, we went over to here to get to K. That is our horizontal di di distance or our horizontal component, and that is a distance of three. So that goes here. And then we do the same thing for the vertical. And that is from here to here. Okay, so the vertical distance is five, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So this distance here is four. So that goes there. So in the diagram, name the vector, starting initial point J, terminal point K. So it's JK with this line over the top and then bracket three comma four bracket. So at this point, you should be able to do number three and four. Okay, a transformation is a function that moves or changes a figure in some way to produce a new figure called an image. Another name for the original figure is the pre-image. The points on the pre-image are the inputs for the transformation, and the points on the image are the outputs. So here's the core concept for translations. A translation moves every point of a figure in the same distance in the same direction. More specifically, a translation maps or moves the point P and Q of a plane figure along a vector a comma B to the points P prime and Q prime so that one of the following statements is true. P P prime equals Q Q prime and segment P P prime is parallel to Q Q prime or P P prime equals Q Q prime and P P prime and Q Q prime are collinear. 
Okay, so what do they mean by that? Well, let me show you. Let me duplicate these pieces. Um, actually, let me just do this and go here and go here and go here and go here and then do the same with the red one. Okay, so what they're saying is if I take P, P prime, that is this segment. So actually, let me draw one more. Okay, try this one more time. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. Okay. So it says P, P prime. That is this black line right here. P, P prime equals Q, Q prime. So if those two sides are equal, that's that congruent marker. And P, P prime is parallel to Q, Q prime. Or P, P prime and Q, Q prime are collinear. Meaning they're on the same line. So I'm going to translate this to here. And since these two lines are parallel, then the diagram that got moved, the segment PQ, becomes P prime Q prime up here. It is the same length. It has the same slope. Nothing gets rotated or turned. It just gets shifted to the right and up. And every component on that segment gets moved the same amount. So it is an, an image of the pre-image. So the red is a copy of the blue and they are congruent. Okay, example two is translating a figure using a vector. So it says the vertices of triangle ABC are A is zero, three. So I go over zero, up three. This is A. B is two, four over two, up four, here is B, and C is one, zero, over one, up zero, this is C. So let me connect these, and I will draw a line segment from A to C, A to B, and B to C. So there's my triangle, and let me just connect all these pieces. Whoops, let me do this. Okay, so then what I wanna do is I wanna draw a vector. So let me do this and I'll make my vector red. And the vector is five, negative one. So in other words, if you pick any one of the points, let's make it blue, like C, and five is your horizontal, one, two, three, four, five. And down one would put me right there. So there's my vector that is going to the right five and down one. If I copy that and put that at B, put the initial end at B, and then finally move this last one, initial point at A, then that's going to tell me where my points are going to land. So C prime is going to be six negative one. Um, B prime is going to be seven, three, and I'm off the grid there, but I can tell what it is by just looking here. It went over one more and up three, seven, three, and A is right here, and they're primes, by the way. A prime is five comma two. So I would label that, and then I would connect them like so. So here's segment A prime, B prime, B prime, C prime, A prime, C prime. 
Okay, so this triangle moved to here. They are duplicates. They are congruent triangles, and they're just in a different location. Shifted right five, down one. Okay, so that figure has been translated to the, the red one is called the pre-image. The black one would be the image. So now you should be able to do problems five, six, and eight on your exercises. Okay, example three is the converse from example two. In example two, they gave us a triangle and told us what the vector direction was, and we had to produce the other triangle. In this situation, they gave us both triangles, and they want us to tell what the vector is. Write a rule for the translation, and that is the vector rule. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a vector. So I will... I'll draw it in, since red and blue are being used already, I'll draw it in black. And let me draw it with one and make it a little bit thicker. I'm going, and notice where the A and the A prime are. So your A is your initial, your A prime is your terminal. So you're going to start at B and go to B prime. Start at A, go to A prime. Start at C and go to C prime. Be careful of your direction. So there's what it would look like if you were to draw it. And then we would say the rule is something comma something. So what did I do? So now I'm going to show you in detail what happened. So I'm going to use green for my direction vector or my horizontal direction. So to get from C to C prime, I went I had to go to the left that many units. And to get from C prime or there up to C prime is my vertical distance. And then all I do is count and write that in. So one, two, three, four. Careful, it's to the left. That's left four is negative four. And then up one is positive one. Okay, and let me label the diagram. This is a distance of negative four because we're going to the left. I know distance can't be negative. This is a distance of four, but we're moving to the left. So it's negative four and up one. So this is a distance of one. <clears throat> so my vector rule for the translation is negative four comma one in these brackets. So now that you've seen that, you should be able to do problems 11, 12, and 14 in your exercise. Okay, one thing I haven't mentioned is there is also another way to give a rule. And that is, what's this doing? Why is this not going away? Hello, thank you. Okay, so let me see, control Z, get rid of this. All right, struggling with my program, it's malfunctioning. All right, so there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, an X value in my original triangle, which is A, B, C right here, my X, Y point went to a new rule where it was X, plus some horizontal distance, comma, y, plus some vertical distance. Okay, and so I'm going to call those a and b. Okay, so it's x plus a and y plus b. So then when I substitute in, so that's the formula, that's the setup, you always write the original. So for example, point b is at the point 7, comma, 1. And b prime is right here at the point I'll write it down here because it's getting cluttered. That is the point three, two. So B is three comma two and A was seven comma one. So in order to get from seven to three, we had to take that X, which is seven and subtract three. In order to get from one to two, that's our Y. We had to take that Y, which is one and add one to get to two. So left four, I'm sorry, it's not three, it's four. This is supposed to be four. To get from seven to three is not three, it's four. So it's X minus four comma Y plus one. So all you're saying is to get from this point to this point, I took X and I subtracted four. So X was four, now it is zero. And then I took my Y, which is one and added one to get up to two. So the points, all three points, this would work for X comma Y becomes X minus four Y plus one. 
Okay, so that's another way of writing a rule. You could either do it with these brackets or you could say x, y becomes and put the positive and negative changes in there for x and y. Okay, example four is translating a figure in the coordinate plane. So the first thing I'm going to do is graph the quadrilateral. So it says graph the quadrilateral A, B, C, D with the vertices of A, negative one, two, B, negative one, five, C, four, six, and D, one, two, three, four, one, two. Okay, this one's off by one, that's three, six. So let me move that over to here. All right, so this is this is A. I'm not gonna put the coordinates, it makes it all cluttered. A is negative one, two, B is negative one, five. So this is B. C is over four, up six, and D is right here. Okay, so there is our quadrilateral. I'm now going to connect the points. And there is our quadrilateral, A, B, C, D. Let's straighten this out. And I'll connect them all. Okay, so there's the quadrilateral. It says to graph it A, B, C, D, which I did. And its image after a translation, X comma Y becomes X plus three comma Y minus one. So in other words, take A and go up three. Start at A, go up one, two, three, and left one. Start at D, go up one, two, three, left one. Start at C, go up one, two, three, left one. And start at B, initial point one, two, three, left one. I'm now going to construct my new quadrilateral like so. I'm just going to go to the ends of the vectors like this. Oops. Um, let's see. Okay, so I just need to move this one up just a smidge. It's off a little. Okay, so now I have that. Now let me get my vectors out of the way. Well, I'll leave them. Let me just make this a little thicker. And I'll change the color to blue. Just so you can see it stand out better. Okay, and let me change this to uh, green and make it thicker. Okay, so here's what I did. I took the green A, B, C, D. I moved it left or up three, up three, left one. So this is A prime. This is B prime right here. This is C prime. And this point right here is D prime. So all my primes are at the terminal end of my vectors and my initial end contains the four vertices of the pre-image. So it says to graph the quadrilateral and its image after this translation. So the green was the pre-image and the blue is the image. Okay, so that's how you translate a figure. So now you should be able to do 17, 18, and 20 on your exercises. Okay, another bit of postulate and theorem timeout. So it says performing compositions a rigid motion is a transformation that preserves length and angle measure. So if you're preserving the length of all the sides and the measures of all the angles, the image will be the same size and shape or congruent to the pre-image. Another name for rigid motion is an isometry. A rigid motion maps lines to lines, rays to rays, and segments to segments, and angles to angles, if you will. So postulate 4.1, translation postulate, a translation is a rigid motion. Because a translation is a rigid motion, 
and a rigid motion preserves length and angle measure, the following statements are true for the translation shown. So here are two triangles. It says DE equals D prime E prime. In other words, the length of DE is equal to the length of D prime E prime. EF, EF equals the length of E prime F prime. And FD, the bottom, is equal to F prime D prime. The measure of angle D is equal to the measure of D prime. The measure of angle E is equal to the measure of E prime. And the measure of angle F equals the measure of angle F prime. When two or more transformations are combined to form a single transformation, the result is a composition of transformations. Okay, so that's called a composition. So think of a composition in writing. All right, so you have a paragraph that's just a paragraph, and you have several paragraphs that you put together. The paragraphs combine to create the composition. Same in math. You make a, you do one rigid motion, that is a transformation. You do a second rigid motion so that your third object equals the first object, then that is a composition of transformations. So the theorem 4.1 composition theorem says the composition of two or more rigid motions is a rigid motion. And there's a proof on page 180, example 35. <clears throat> All right, so the theorem above is important because it states that no matter how many rigid motions you perform, <coughs> excuse me, lengths and angle measures will be preserved in the final image. For instance, the composition of two or more translations is a translation as shown. So where is our first pre-image? It's PQ. PQ is this blue segment. It got transformed over to the red P prime, Q prime. And they're marked as being congruent. So you move PQ to P prime, Q prime. That was a translation. Move P prime, Q prime to P double prime, Q double prime. It's These two are congruent. And since these two are congruent, this is congruent to this by the transitive property. And so the composition would be going directly from the original pre-image PQ to my final image P double prime, Q double prime. Okay, so if I move it here and then over here, it's the same as moving it from its original directly here. And that is the composition. Okay, so example five is performing a composition. So it says to graph segment RS with endpoints R, negative eight comma five. So I'm gonna plot the points first and let me use red for my pre-image. So R is negative one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, up one, two, three, four, five. There is negative eight, five, and that is R. S is negative six, one, two, three, four, five, six, up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So here is S. I will connect those with a straight segment. Okay, so there's our S. So what I want to do is I want to make these all one piece, so I need to group them. Okay, and so I should be able to move that all one piece. Okay, so there it is. There's R, S. Negative eight, five is R. Negative six, eight is S. So this is R, S. Translation one, I'll do in blue. So I will highlight that in blue. Okay, I will do this translation in blue. And it says to translate the original x comma y, x plus 5, y minus 2. So I'm going to write that over here. x comma y becomes x plus 5 comma y minus 2. So I'm going to show my work this time. I haven't done this yet. And x comma y for r. So my r is going to be negative 8 comma 5. And that is going to become r prime, which is negative 8 plus five comma five, my y minus two. And therefore R of negative eight comma five is going to become R prime negative three comma three. 
So I'm going to go left three, up three, and that's right there. And that is R prime. I'll do the same with S. So if S is negative six comma eight, and I want it to become S prime, which is X plus five comma Y minus two, then I'm gonna say S, let me draw a line here too to decipher these two different things I'm doing. Negative six comma eight is going to become S prime, which is my X negative six plus my five here, comma Y minus two. So S is going to be negative six comma eight and S prime is going to be negative one comma six. So S prime is negative one, one, two, three, four, five, six. So here is S prime. So now let me draw that. And I guess I don't have to move these, so I'm not gonna worry about con connecting everything. Here is S, S prime. Okay, so if I check this, I went down one, two, and I went one, two, three, four, five to the right. So that's plus five down two, five comma negative two, okay, which is right here. Now I'm going to translate again, and I'm going to take and make, do a translation of negative four comma negative two. Okay, so be careful here. What you're going to do is you're going to take R prime, which is right here, uh, negative three, three. And it's going to become R double prime, which is negative three minus four. Let me write it out first. Let me write the formula before I start substituting. My formula is X minus four comma y minus two. Okay, so I'm gonna take r prime, which is negative three, three, move it to r double prime, which is x, which is negative three minus four, comma y, which is three minus two. So my r, that is negative three comma three, r prime, is going to become r double prime after my move, after my translation, and it's gonna be at negative seven, three minus two is one. So I'm gonna go left one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and up one, that's right here, and that is r double prime, okay? So I'm going to do the same with s. So let me just draw a line here, and then I'll say s prime, which is right here, negative one, six, is going to get moved, translated to S double prime, which is X minus four comma Y minus two. Okay, I'm just following this rule again. So S prime is at negative one comma six. It is going to S double prime, which is when I substitute in my negative one for X minus four, and my Y is six minus two. So my S prime, which is one comma six, negative one comma six is going to become S double prime, negative one minus four is negative five, six minus two is four. So I'm gonna go negative one, two, three, four, five, up one, two, three, four. There is my S double prime. And then I'm going to draw a segment from it and to it. What? From R double prime to S double prime. Okay, so these are four or three segments that are the same length. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, left two. So they're all the same length, which is square root of 13. And it says to graph RS, endpoints R and S, and its image after the composition. Okay, so we went from R to R, RS to R prime S prime. 
And then we went from R prime S prime to R double prime S double prime. So we could have done this in one step. And that is going to be a direct translation or the composition will then be this. I, um, I don't think the book is asking for that, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, so here's what the composition would look like. We would take R and go to directly to R double prime. Take S and go directly to S double prime. And I can write a rule for that. And I'll just do the other short rule instead of the plus. So R went right one and down one, two, three, four. So if I go left or is it right five? If I go right five and then left four, that's a right one. Right five, left four, we only have moved a total of one. If I moved right three or up three, I mean, is it three? No, it's two. If I moved left down two, down two, and then down two again, that's a total of down four. All right, so moving from here to here to here is the same as a direct move. So this was a transform translation from red to blue, a translation from blue to green, and that was a composition of a direct shot from R to R, R, R S to R prime S, R double prime S double prime. And that rule was one comma negative four. Okay, so after doing that, you should be able to do 21, 22, and 24 on your exercise. Okay, solving real life problems. Example six, modeling with mathematics. You are designing a favicon for a golf website. In an image editing program, you move the red rectangle right there, two units left and three units down. Then you move the red rectangle one unit right and one unit up. Rewrite the composition as a single translation. So I'm going to show this in the diagram with my vectors. So I'm going to get a vector and I'm going to leave it black. <clears throat> and I'm going to start at this corner right here. And what it says to do is go two units left and three units down. All right, so then I'm going to just copy this and do three more and put them at each vertice of the red flag. So there's one. There's another one. And there's the fourth one. So in other words, this red flag is going to get moved left two, down three. So let's first determine where they were. This is the point 12, 11. This is the point 12, 14. This is the point 8, 11. Okay, so I'm gonna squeeze that in here, eight comma 11 is right here. And this is the point eight comma 14. So those are my four points. And what I wanna do is move them two units left, three units down. Okay, so that is the first move. So if you could picture this, let me do this with a rectangle. And let me make it red, fill, line color black. Okay, and I'm just going to put it right here. Okay, and let me change the background. So we can see the grid. Let me just make it a little bit transparent. There we go, that's good right there. Okay, so what we did was we took this new square, rectangle I mean, and we moved it left two, down three. And it ended up at the end of all my vectors. Okay, so there's my first move. And then you move the red rectangle one unit right and one unit up. 
So then I'm going to go right one, up one. So that's where I'm going to end up in, in this, or finally. So I haven't drawn the vectors for that. This is going to get a little messy, but I did want to show it in the diagram because I'm not going to be able to see it. I'm now going to have a vector that goes right one, up one, which is right there. And it's sitting right on top of the other vector. Okay, so I'm going to do this algebraically. So if we have the point, let's call these, oh, I don't know, start with A up here, B here, C here, and D over here at this point right here. So A is the point 8, 14, and we are going to move it, and it said right here, two units left, which would be 8, minus two. I'm going to leave a space here for a reason. And then I have the point 14. So I'm moving the eight. Actually, let me, uh, yeah, that was right, 14. So I'm going to move the eight left two, and then the 14, three units down would be minus three. And then I'm going to close parentheses over here. Okay. Um, actually, let me just do this in two steps. So I'm going to keep going now. So 8, 14 is going to become, I forgot my A prime. It's going to become A prime, which is 6, 11. So if I check that, if I go over 6 up 11, I'm right here, which is where A prime ended up, 6, 11. Okay, so that is A going to a prime, but then I need to take a prime, which was six comma 11, and move that to a double prime, which is one unit right, one unit up, which would be six plus one comma 11 plus one. So a double prime is going to become seven comma 12, okay? And that's where it ended up. Over 7, up 12 is right there. And sure enough, that's where it is. So what I want to do now is I'm going to highlight. A started right here. And A double prime ended up here. So it says rewrite the composition as a single translation. So with one point, if it works for one point, it's going to work for all. <clears throat> because it is a rigid motion. So... How did I get from A, 8, 14, to A, double prime, which is 8, something, comma, 14, something? So to get from 8 to 7, I had to subtract 1. And to get from 14 to 12, I had to subtract 2. Okay, so in other words, my new rule is going to be a x comma y in general is going to become a double prime x minus one comma y minus two. So if I check that, if I start at a and I go left one down two, did I end up at a double prime? And the answer is yes. A double prime is right there, left one down two. So there is my rule, or I could have just simply said minus one comma minus two, close the bracket. Okay, so there's a real world scenario where we took um, two translations and showed the composition rule in one step. Okay, so now try number 26. Okay, that brings us to the end of chapter 4.1. Here are the exercise problems I'd like you to do. So... Do those and have a great day.